everybody, it's Iron Metalhead Weatherman here. Hopefully everyone's doing well. Been uh, some tough sledding over here recently on the channel. Apologies due to the uh, slowdown in content, because man, computer's been giving me the fits for sure. But that being said, we ain't giving up out here. But just uh, definitely could use some support right now. So definitely uh, hit that like button. If you're new around here, definitely consider subscribing. Also hitting that share button on the road to a thousand grind isn't stopping just slow down that's all that being said though you have a lot to talk about so this is probably going to be a long video so I'm just giving you a fair warning in advance there's winter weather going on right now and more to be expected and there's also severe weather to talk about here which includes a 2% tornado threat here includes milwaukee chicago rockford illinois and then also even still including parts of eastern davenport here towards iowa so some busy times ahead here for not just today but also beyond that point we also have a day four slight risk which is not something you see too often towards february this setup looking more robust here and also entailing the threat of maybe some damaging winds and tornadoes. So if you're over here towards Houston, New Orleans, Baton Rouge, Alexandria, Lufkin, Texas as well. Great find. Definitely need to be on the watch for the threat of severe weather as we look towards Sunday. And then as far as winter weather is concerned. We, we're going to go ahead and switch over to this. And the thing that i'm making note of here is there's also a thunderstorm threat over here so we could be seeing maybe thunder snow possibly over towards flagstaff and areas off to the south here prescott's also a point of interest looking at the uh overall winter storm impacts and the probability of moderate impacts at that to see a signal this strong is pretty impressive so we have a 90 almost 90 percent plus signal over here so could see some uh, pretty big time winter weather over here today and as we continue to go forward from that point that signal kind of holds out kind of fades away pretty quick too by the time we get towards 36 hours which is on friday things have uh, calmed down a bit now but by the time we get towards sunday or saturday excuse me we start to see an increase in that signal again over towards denver where we're starting to even see some red popping up. When I was trying to do the video yesterday, I was mainly seeing mostly a 30 percentile signal. Now we're getting into the 50s and to the 60 percentiles now even. And the signal is also increasing over here towards the uh, panhandle of Oklahoma and Texas over here as we progress into Sunday. And that trend continues even as we head into early Monday morning here. So then eventually, of course, this moves off to the east as well. And eventually we'll be looking at the Great Lakes in the Ohio Valley and eventually even the Northeast. Just about on time for uh, Valentine's Day. So if you're doing your Valentine's Day shopping the day before, because I know some of you consider it a more significant holiday than others. Definitely want to be extra careful right here. Don't leave Mr. or Mrs. or whoever. Uh out to worry about you so if i were to if i were you i'd do it i'd do uh anything that i'm trying to do in advance here and on the day of try to really i would try and stay inside because even if uh things do start to clear up by valentine's day itself which it very well might there's going to be a pattern shift here and these temperatures are going to be a little bit colder so this this may linger a bit especially if you're over towards new england also towards maine nothing too far out of the ordinary for you but still could be a hamper on the day itself so let's go ahead and shift over to what the models could look like here for these days and really just beyond that point so looking at the upper levels here anyone that's unfamiliar with the channel we're looking at two different models here we're doing our little comparison here this is the european model very reliable model here to the left and then the gfs to the right looking at the same level of the atmosphere this is pretty high up about 40,000 feet here is our current storm systems that are both causing the winter weather and the severe weather here and it looks like mainly 
throughout the day and into tomorrow is where things are more notable over here towards Arizona. Eventually it tapers off, I think, by later this afternoon. And then these, these severe weather setup that we have over here that has the uh, marginal risk, it's a cold core setup. And I really think the storm uh, potential is going to be highest towards mid to late morning, I would say. So within the next little bit here is when I would expect uh, weather conditions to start to change a little bit. Don't expect this to be anything widespread, but with the kinematics that we have in play, despite the temperatures being a little colder than what most people would expect for severe weather, I think that we can get a few storms to fire. These are not going to be like your typical storms that have a lot of thunder and lightning in them. These are going to be mainly cold rain type systems, but at the end of the day, they could have a little bit of a circulation with them, if you know what I mean. And as we continue to go forward here, if I can get this to roll, we eventually watch the winter weather shift over here towards the uh, Rockies over here and then towards the Panhandles as we head in towards the weekend after that. And then eventually this starts to really get itself organized. And this and this little branch of uh, jet streak here ends up working its way over towards the uh, ugh, my brain's not working. Brain fog, morning brain fog. But if we look at this, we can see a little bit of a uh, see almost that convergence and divergence kind of developing here. And this is going to be our point of interest in regards to severe weather tomorrow. It's kind of looking like there could be maybe even two different areas of interest right here. But this is what's kind of catching my eye over here in particular. And this kind of looks a little further to the east than what I would expect. Because by the time we get towards uh, early morning Sunday here, this little piece of jet streak here is a little further to the east than what was originally being shown here. But of course, this is just the euro that we're looking at here. But this could be a point of interest as well as this as far as Sunday is concerned. And then after that, of course, we're shifting over to the winter weather once again. We'll get a look at this a little bit better as we go towards the mid to uh, lower levels of the atmosphere, I would say. But another thing to make note of here is we start to see more troughs coming in from that point really so we'll start to see a difference in the weather here and an increase in activity as well as we go through the next 10 days on this model here so if we go over to the gfs there are a couple things that we may notice that are a bit different from the euro it's not uncommon for these two models to kind of work against each other in a way but an interesting thing to make note of is there's an area right here still where we could see maybe the development of a couple storms. I still think that we're trending a little further to the east than expected. It's not uncommon to see that four days out, but still it's something that I'm keeping a note, mental note of for sure. So we go towards Saturday into Sunday. So there's our area of interest again, and this low pressure area actually looks a little bit stronger in the upper levels in comparison with the GFS to the uh, Euro here. And I think with this, we start to see a more notable cool down and then also maybe even a push a little further to the south with winter weather could be possible because it does have a little bit more of a southerly track. Can that moisture interact with the cold, though, is going to be the question that we end up asking here as we continue to go forward. So as we continue to move here, we see another uh, bit, of, another little section right here. Where we see some ridging. So we're going to warm up just about as quickly as we cool down. And then after that, I have concerns once again with the uh, Gulf Coast here, maybe towards Florida. We could be seeing a replay of what we saw last weekend as we go towards the weekend of Valentine's Day. For those of you that consider it a big deal. I don't really consider it that much personally. But that being said here, this could be uh, a little bit more troublesome for Florida. Could I don't really see this necessarily being a severe weather setup, but could be seeing an increase of rainfall for not just Florida, but just the southeast in general. Eventually, new trough comes in later down the line here towards the second half of the month. And this will ultimately end up resulting in 
not just only a weather pattern change, but also eventually maybe even the chance of winter weather returning a little bit further towards the northeast and the Great Lakes. I do see a signal here that could show the potential for a lake effect event. But of course, 336 hours out, can't have too much confidence in that right now. So we're kind of looking like throughout the month, we're just going to be in a bit of a flip-flop pattern here, if anything. We'll go ahead and throw 500 mil, the 500 mil map on here. And the thing to make note of with this map is we're looking a little bit lower. So things are going to look a little bit more stout. And really the thing that we're looking for on this map is going to be the short wave that's going to exist on Sunday here. Because that's where the confidence really starts to increase with the uh, severe weather threat here. So here's a look at that system right here. And really what we're looking for is a couple of ripples here in these uh, contour lines. A couple of really sharp ripples in particular. And I'm not seeing them as much as I would be expecting expected to but I do see a little something right about here and again this is kind of uh, supporting my thought on maybe a little bit of a trend to the east here with this setup I was expecting it to be a little bit further off to the west here considering we were including Houston but it doesn't look quite as impressive here we could also be dealing with the potential of some issues with uh, some prefrontal rain here out ahead of where the severe weather should start and I think that could be an inhibiting factor or maybe even a fail parameter at this point so that's something to keep an eye on as well so while not necessarily a shoe in it's definitely something to pay attention to for both you and I if you live over here towards New Orleans for example <clears throat> eventually we do see that cold air try to push further to the south Cold air is mainly, the uh, below freezing temperatures mainly look like it's going to be reserved mostly for the northern tiers, the mid-Atlantic, and then the northeast itself. Hence why we have potential for some winter weather here and some notable winter weather at that. After that, it looks like that storm system clears out pretty quick. And then it looks like we start to get a little bit more cold air rushing in after that point, though. And then eventually we start to see a much bigger storm system for the uh, northern states here too. So, the old man winter is not done yet. Not by a long shot. Regardless of what Poxitani said. For those of you that do read into that. But that being said, here's a GFS comparison. Pretty much the, a similar deal. And I'm seeing a bit of congruency between the two. Which does lead me to have some confidence in the setup. Albeit, this looks a little bit more like what the Storm Prediction Center is discussing with the uh, threat being over towards the west a little bit. Do you think it could be a little further north as well though, but we could also see a shift here. I do think we still might see a shift here to the east because I'm seeing a couple of different uh, signals here. I usually look for these little gaps here, which usually is an indication of storm development based on model data here. But of course, it's modded model data, and it's they're not always right. But from what I'm seeing here, I'm definitely seeing a couple new signals over here, mainly towards Mississippi, maybe even towards Alabama, northern Louisiana as well. I think a little further to the north in areas like uh, Arkansas, I'm not really expecting as much. I think a lot of the instability, the uh, greatest instability or the best thermo is going to be more so towards the Gulf Coast. And that might be enough along with the... Uh, profile here that we're seeing for some development to get going here and we'll get more in depth with this as we go on i don't want to make this into an hour long video so that being said pretty much a similar deal looks like we do get a little bit more cold air moving in a little bit more of a digging trough to the south here but either way it does look like a vent like overall here northeast mid-atlantic is going to be the point of interest in regards to winter weather as we start next week for sure and then of course after that point we do see a little bit more prominent ridging with the GFS as we go into next week and then eventually here's where we start to pay more attention to Florida towards the end of the 10-day period and then here's where we start to see that little pattern shift here 
and what looks to be a pretty interesting signal here too maybe some snow towards the uh ohio valley starting to reach maybe even to into tennessee here so that's going to be another big storm to watch and then after that we're starting to see an increase in that active weather pattern beyond that point so plenty to keep track of there a lot of what we just saw on the uh wind profile map we're going to go ahead and take a look at what we will be seeing with the temperatures here with that ridge that we saw in place it's not surprising to see those warmer temperatures and really if we stop this around sunday this is the thing that i'm making note of the most here is the surface temperatures if we make the comparison between now between uh, what we have set up for today over here towards the midwest here with that cold core severe setup you'll see a stark difference seeing 60s and 70s for tomorrow's or sunday setup i should say i don't know why i said tomorrow for sunday setup over here towards lunchtime and then if we look towards current time go a couple we go a few hours ahead here look at that 50s 60s right here and you're probably thinking okay why is why is there severe weather set up there with the kinematics that we had in place and we just showed you that map earlier if we look over towards the dew points that's going to be the real reason why and it's not even that we're going to have incredible dew points even but with just enough of a moisture return here getting into those low 40s and 50s if we could get some lower 50s to sneak in there we could have a little mini cold core event like i said maybe a couple tornadoes some damaging wind gusts and some hail are possible with that but this is going to be far different in comparison to the traditional setup that we're more likely to see in regards to sunday you can already see the moisture coming into place by saturday and by the time we get into sunday already look at that mid 60s in the for the uh, dew points over here across a large portion of the southeast here but with everything kind of coming into place best around the ozarks and western Dix dixie alley here definitely looks like uh a class a little bit more towards a classic dixie alley setup we'll see if this ends up verifying or not but anyway wanted to show that little comparison real quick this is a look at the temperatures right here and like i said the ridging in play it's going to feel pretty nice here to start the week in fact we could have a day that feels like spring over here for some of us in the southeast here if you're over towards the uh eastern parts of the carolinas here we're getting into the 70s for some of us it's pretty nice to say the least shoot if anything if you're going to do something for valentine's day i would honestly do it this weekend if you're over towards the southeast because that cold air does eventually come in and it's going to come in just in time for valentine's day too so if anyone's uh if I'm putting a hamper in on uh anyone's holiday here just trying to keep you on top of things if i'm being honest so don't don't shoot the messenger that's all i'm gonna say there but eventually like i said that cold air does try to push its way to the south for areas further to the north here for example we're gonna go back a little bit you can see the difference it's clear as day we're starting to see those uh those teens and maybe even a few single digits trying to sneak their way back in towards the northern states here so some pretty brisk weather over here towards the northern states to come and then also if you look towards the northeast my goodness it is going to get cold pretty quick so like i said seems like some good snuggling weather and no i'm not trying to play keep it but if we go over to the gfs it's going to pretty much be a similar deal mainly going to be seeing that ridging off to the south here for now then eventually we do see that cold air and remember that troughing is a little bit more to more oriented to the south here so we'll see more cold air with this run here so some things to keep some things to keep in mind here for sure and then towards the back half of the month that's when things start to get a lot more busy here and i'm thinking winter weather is going to be a much bigger factor beyond that point there so that being said let's go ahead and finish this out by looking at what we could be seeing over the 10 to 16 day period here so start out of course with the euro and we'll start with what we're seeing now 
so this is about i would say 1518z here's that signal for our cold core setup and then here's our winter weather setup as well so we continue to go on here of course we see that winter weather kind of drop off for a moment but then eventually surface low returns and then we see notable amount of snow over here start to develop towards denver then this little secondary system that pops up here pulls in some extra moisture and this is where that potential for the setup over towards the texas oklahoma panhandles new mexico comes into play here and then this eventually interacts with that warm sector on sunday and the severe weather setup starts to come into play as we get into sunday afternoon then after that here is where we start to see that winter weather system come into play for the northeast and the uh, mid-atlantic here and this almost tries to take that nor'easter type route and it kind of does but it's going to be more so for the new england region so this will mainly be a thing as we go from monday night into tuesday and we could see some notable impacts over here could be some heavy snow possible here towards the coast of maine in particular then after that right around the time of valentine's day we get a clipper system nothing of major note to talk about by that point and then as we go towards the following systems after that point nothing of major significance within that within the last part of the 10 day period but florida does look like they're going to be getting into the action here within the next little bit here and then also we have to remember that we still are dealing with atmospheric river issues out towards the west and it looks like towards the back half of this run we start to see a bit more of that so let's go beyond that point to the 16 day period and of course pretty much a similar deal cold core setup winter weather setups here and then as we continue to drag this onward this is looking in from uh, saturday into sunday and like i said here's what could be the limiting factor some of these uh early morning showers maybe a couple of booms of thunder over here might inhibit this setup if we can get some clearing here definitely could be a more notable severe setup here so definitely going to be on the lookout for that also forgot to show the oklahoma texas also looks like kansas setup here with this with this uh winter weather setup alongside the severe setup so pretty dynamic system there then after that point it does look like we have pretty much a similar deal this clipper system looks a little bit more robust on here in comparison to what we're seeing on euro and then beyond that point there's that signal that kind of interests me a bit more I do think that maybe the mid-atlantic could get in on this setup here towards the 19th and then after that it looks like we get a pretty stout storm system if this trend holds but of course 300 hours out can't put a lot of merit into that and then another system around the around this time frame could be uh interacting with the new england region as we get towards the end of this run here also again having to look out for florida and also over towards the west coast for active weather as well so that being said that's pretty much all i got for you guys on this video i hope you enjoyed it a little bit of a change of pace in here hopefully you guys get to see the video but if you did and you watched towards the end definitely make sure you consider subscribing if you're new around here again also make sure you hit that like button leave a comment and also hit that share button trying to get back into a rhythm here hopefully we can get this th this thing back rolling here that being said appreciate you guys being here see you soon it's been tired metalhead weatherman until then take care and have an awesome day